Here in Great Barrington, on December 14, 1992, Wayne Lowe, an 18 year old student, used a SKS semi automatic rifle to kill a professor and a student and wound four others. Lowe is now serving two life sentences in Cedar Junction, a maximum security prison in Massachusetts. Kevin Larkin was the police officer who talked Wayne Lowe into surrendering. I was the only one in the station. The phones were ringing, um, parents were calling, news organizations were calling, and on top of that, the shooter called me. I said, well, why did you do it? He says, I don't want to talk about it. I said, well, why did you call? And he said, um, because um, I want to give myself up. And I said, well, I'm going to tell you something. Unless you do exactly what I say, we're going to kill you. We were getting the officers in place. We had one on each corner of the building. And I said to him, now, you have, again, I said, Wayne, I said, you got to do exactly as I said, or we're going to kill you. Plain and simple. You're not going to walk out of this alive. You may take some of us, but we're going to get you. He said, I don't want to hurt anybody else, and I don't want to get hurt. I said, then do exactly as I said. So I said, when you get ready to walk out of the building, walk out of the building with your arms, inner, hands interlocked on top of your head. Don't hang up the phone and let the police officer come. As I'm doing that, I got the microphone keyed so the officers can hear what I'm saying so they know what's going on. So he walks out, and all of a sudden I hear, I hear the phone get picked up, and it's my best friend on the police department, well, afterward. He says, hey, Kevin, we got the SOB. He said, I'm going to go have a cigarette now. The student killed in the shooting was Galen Gibson. His father described the day he was told about his son's murder. Galen was what they call a, a, a target of opportunity. In other words, he wasn't known to Wayne Lode. Wayne didn't have anything personal against him. Uh, he just was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So then the why becomes a bigger question of, you know, what causes someone to do what Wayne Lowe did. And as you know well from all the 20 years of school shootings that have uh, followed, uh, it's a question you ask every time. Why? Why does somebody do this? You know, you know the thing is, is when, when he was caught, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the campus or not, the campus kind of sets on a hill like this. As you walk in off of Alford Road, he shot the security guard in the shack. He shot uh, a teacher that was driving in. He walked through the campus and was just shooting. I said to him on the phone, I said, well, why did you stop shooting? He said, because the gun jammed. And he said, I said, well, that means you were going to kill other people? He said, I'd kill them all if I could. New gun laws in Massachusetts now make it more difficult to purchase guns in one day. A property licensed person in Massachusetts is relatively um, simple to purchase a gun. Um, as we mentioned, there are the background checks um, and um, some paperwork process. And if everything works right on the background checks, you could probably in, be in and out of establishment as quickly as 20 minutes. But the many new laws adopted throughout the country have not prevented more recent school shootings. In 2012, 20-year-old Adam Lanza killed 20 children and 6 adults in Newtown, Connecticut with a gun legally purchased by his mother. Nicole Hockley, whose son Dylan was killed in the Sandy Hook school shooting, talked with us about how the event affected her life. The way that I look at life has completely changed. I, how could it not, in all honesty? You know, one morning I'm putting my boys on a bus to go to school and, and, and after that I only have one child. Um, Life changes on a dime. Without a doubt, um, uh, valuing life went up after it. My son was in the fourth grade um, that day. Um, he wasn't harmed um, physically. Um, but I can tell you to this day, um, in fact, this weekend, um, he's afraid of windows. And, um, you know, an 11 year old boy shouldn't be afraid of windows. How do we prevent incidents like Sandy Hook and Simon's Rock from happening again? The reason a lot of change hasn't happened is because the argument has been about fighting, and it's been a political argument. It's always been about legislation, and it's always been about gun control or gun freedom. Well, I'm not interested in fighting. I'm interested in winning. And for me, that's saying, 
what is the new place to start a conversation? And for, and for us, it's around how do we build a safer future for children? Let's start a conversation from that perspective. And then there's a lot of solutions that lend themselves to be open. Again, I think we've become a violence-based society. You know, and unfortunately, you know, everybody's screaming about gun control, about this and about that and about the other thing, but this problem is never going to be solved unless we get rid of the way we think of violence and we treat it so blasé. In the wake of the tragedy at Sandy Hook, the Great Barrington Select Board considered a resolution to further restrict guns in town. If you look at the individuals that, you know, that have conducted like Sandy Hook, that gentleman had mental health issues. The firearms weren't his. The firearms were his mother's. He had access to them, which in Massachusetts, on, uh, the, your firearms are to be locked up all, at all times unless they're being used by you. Guns and their easy access, for me, I think is part of the problem. I've got nothing wrong with uh, strong hunting culture. There's a lot of strong, proud hunters out there. My grandfather was one. Um, and the right to protect yourself and your home is an important right. But when in terms of um, freely available military-style guns being available or not kept safely in a home so that a child can access it or a minor or someone who's not mentally capable, that becomes a problem. And I think sometimes we're a little bit too relaxed in that. We need to protect our Second Amendment rights for sure but with rights come responsibilities, and we need to ensure that those responsibilities are maintained. While it's true that guns can't kill by themselves, what can we do in our communities to prevent gun violence? Be part of this solution. Care enough to be active, learn, become educated on the, on the causes of gun violence, and be part of the solution. But from a community perspective and a culture within school, reach out to each other. Um, don't just be a bystander. Don't allow, you know, the kid in middle school to sit by themselves at the lunch table. Be involved, show compassion and kindness, recognize each other, and work together. You know, everybody makes a big deal out of all the shootings at Virginia Tech and Newtown and everything, and Columbine and all this other stuff, but everybody forgets about Great, everybody forgets about Great Barrington. You got to remember, Great Barrington was one of, the, one of the first school shootings in the country. I think people didn't want to believe it could happen, so I think that um, it was kind of forgotten. Gun violence is an issue that is not likely to be resolved anytime soon. Maybe the best thing our communities can do is to begin with small steps. And the key to change was engaging, getting people involved. And how do you do that? Well, you engage via educating people, because most people really don't understand how widespread gun violence is. 500,000 acts of violence a year with a gun. In the last four decades, more people have died combined from guns than in any war in the U.S. that the U.S. has been involved with. I mean, it's huge, but most people don't understand that and it's never been brought to the type of level and attention the way that we plan on um, taking it to get people engaged. Because we've seen when they're engaged, you get change like civil rights, you get change like marriage equality, you get change from recycling. In the other pieces, it has to be generational. So you have to get young people involved. They have to care.